One of the things I love about The Witcher is that even if the show is set in a fantasy world, the story is really modern. I think about the male friendship and the way it portrays female character. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is one of the reasons of his success? I, I, I wholeheartedly uh, believe that. I think that is down to Lauren's writing and her team. Lauren has is very much approached the entirety of this fantasy genre with the view to include everyone in it as best she can. And I think that's the, one of the greatest things that I celebrate about her writing and about this show. And it's um, I'm, I'm incredibly, incredibly fortunate to be part of it and to, to see these strong female characters, characters from all walks of life, from various different backgrounds, all coming together to, to tell these stories. It really, really matters to me. The Bard over the years has become a central figure to uh, per per perceive uh, memory. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, nowadays there is someone that uh, we can call uh, our Bard? Our Bard, yeah, uh, me. I I'll be your, I'll be your Bard. <laughs> no, I think um, that I, I would hazard to say there's the, the closest you could get is to to some very, very key stand-up comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, the first person that popped into my head was Bo Burnham. I believe that he is, you know, the voice of a generation. He is capturing the, uh, all the, the, the difficulties and all the, the complexities of, the, of, of his generation and generations but, uh, younger as well. And I think he's the, he's the closest um, I'd get to. Um, for the first season, you say that you find inspiration for your for your character in the office and in parks and recreation. Yeah, yeah. I would like to know if, uh, uh, for the second season, uh, the tone will be different. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, maybe very, very potentially. There, there is uh, there was, there's always an improvisational, uh, <laughs> much to the chagrin of the writers, an improvisational tone to the way that I like to work with Yaskia. Um, Lauren is always perpetually open to offerings and and that's all still very much in there and and there's a huge amount of fun to play but at the same time we were very very conscious we wanted to mature the character see a philosophical side to him see, him, see perhaps see, uh, even a darker side to him and uh, we got a little bit of that in season one I hope that we will continue growing that throughout season two your character became immediately really popular do you think uh, which is the, the reason why it became so popular? Did you have the chance to confront with the audience? I think it was popular before I came along. I think uh, the, the character, I think it, the character's popularity comes from Mr. Sapkowski's writing and, uh, and Lauren's continuation of, of the character. I just turned up and put the costume on. I don't think it's anything to do with me. You're also a musician. I would like to know if you have to choose a music genre to describe your character. Music which genre? One? Yeah, which one would be? <laughs> Funk. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I think in season one, we always try and ba uh, base uh, a lot of Yaskia's work on, 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 on various different musicians, and particularly also the style. Lucinda, our wonderful costume designer, is always open to, to new influences. And I think if we, if we start with, with this sort of Bowie-esque, uh, uh, character in season one. I think there's something a little bit more uh, Freddie Mercury maybe in, the, in his charismatic p performance style, I think. Perhaps, but I mean, that's whether I succeeded or not is, <laughs> is up for grabs. Uh, to uh, a coin became really popular and inspired countless covers. Uh, yeah. uh, there is one you love the most about the one you, you have heard. I don't, uh, I haven't seen a lot of them. I don't tend to go on the internet very much uh, and I'm not, uh, I don't tend to use social media. Uh, but my friend did send me a really good death metal one mm -hmm. and there's a special place in my heart for some death metal. So maybe I should get the electric guitar out and start jamming along with them. <laughs> And in the in the second season, uh, we will we will we uh, see um, a lot of interaction between you and uh, Geralt, like the f in the first season, or uh, your character will have an, a different storytelling. Following the events of season one, there was, um, you know, we saw a rift between Geralt and Yaskia, and I think uh, anyone anyone who's got a best friend in the world, which is hopefully is everyone, will know that 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 can feel like. It can be the equivalent of a breakup sometimes. It can feel so, so heart wrenching. And I think what I enjoyed about going into season two was seeing Yaskia become independent and make some choices that were no longer based on a on a on a friendship. It was about him and about the world around him and trying to find his own 
his own sense of, of being a protagonist and his own he, for the first time perhaps in a long while he can be the lead the lead character in his own story and uh, so that for me was was the was the priority heading into season two I guess thank you so much for your time thank you